Hi, let's talk about the arteries of the posterior neck. So systemic circulation begins in the aorta, specifically the ascending aorta, which is exiting blood out of the left ventricle. That ascending aorta feeds into the arch of the aorta. This arch of the aorta has three major branches. There's the brachiocephalic trunk, then the left common carotid artery, and then the left subclavian artery. The brachiocephalic trunk has two major branches, the right subclavian artery and the right common carotid artery. So if you notice here, there are two subclavian arteries and two common carotid arteries. The subclavian arteries predominantly serve blood to the upper limbs, but they also serve blood to the thoracic wall, as well as the neck. The common carotid arteries are going to bifurcate into internal and external carotid arteries. The internal carotid arteries will predominantly serve the contents of the cranial cavity, as well as a portion of the face whereas the external carotid arteries will predominantly serve the neck and face and superficial parts of the head. When we look at the subclavian arteries, we see that they can theoretically be divisible into three parts. These three parts are named relevant to the anterior scalene muscle. So here we can see the anterior scalene muscle descending down laterally of the neck and inserting into the first rib. So everything which is medial to the anterior scalene muscle will be the first part of the subclavian artery. Anything which is behind the anterior scalene muscle will be the second part of the subclavian artery. And everything lateral to the the lateral margin of the anterior scalene muscle will be the third part of the subclavian artery. And the subclavian artery is going to at, end at approximately the lateral margin of the first rib. So um, everything beyond will be the axillary artery and then eventually that axillary artery will be contiguous with the brachial artery but let's look at the branches of each part of the subclavian artery so the first part of the subclavian artery everything which is medial to the medial edge of the anterior scalene artery there are three major branches um, quite a large branch heading superiorly and medially here is the vertebral artery. That vertebral artery um, is heading towards the transverse foramina of cervical vertebrae C6 through C1. So it will be protected by the uh, by the bone around those foramina. And the vertebral artery will send off branches to the spinal cord and meninges. And eventually, it will head through the foramen magnum of the skull where it meets its counterpart to form the basilar artery. And thus supply the posterior portions of the brain with blood. The other major artery which supplies the brain with blood is the internal carotid. And we'll see in subsequent sessions how vertebral artery plus internal carotid artery supplies the cranial cavity with blood. The next major branch of the first part of the subclavian artery is the internal thoracic artery. That internal thoracic artery is going to supply the anterior and lateral walls of the thorax with blood, as well as parts of the wall of the abdomen with blood as well. The third branch is more topical to what we'll be discussing in this
course, and that is the thyro cervical trunk. So thyro, thyroid, cervical, neck, trunk. And it's going to have four branches. So the thyro cervical trunk main branches are, and we'll just go counterclockwise here, the inferior thyroid artery. The inferior thyroid artery is heading medially and superiorly towards the thyroid gland, which we can see here in the parathyroid glands. Uh, and it's going to have a branch that we'll see later called the inferior laryngeal artery. So to be explored later. The next branch is the ascending cervical artery. The ascending cervical artery is going to supply some of the deep neck muscles, uh, such as the scalene muscles. So here's the anterior scalene muscle with blood. Our next branch is the transverse cervical artery. That transverse cervical artery is going to be the blood supply to the trapezius muscle. And from time to time, that transverse cervical artery may also give rise to the dorsal scapular artery. Uh, that dorsal scapular artery is typically a branch of the third part of the subclavian artery, but it may arise from the transverse cervical artery. And then finally, we have the suprascapular artery. That suprascapular artery, supra, above, scapular, the scapula, is going to head around and then go through the suprascapular notch, and it's going to serve two of our rotator cuff muscles, the supra and infraspinatus muscles with blood. Here we have the anterior scalene muscle removed from the first rib and reflected upwards. And this is going to allow us to see that second part of the subclavian uh, artery and its only branch, the costo cervical trunk. So costa would be a rib, cervical neck. So this trunk is going to supply two regions with blood. There are two major branches. There is the deep cervical artery. That deep cervical artery will supply some of our deep neck muscles with blood. And then the highest or supreme intercostal artery is going to supply the first and the second intercostal spaces. Those are the spaces between the ribs with blood. And we can see that first intercostal space there. And last but not least, we have our dorsal scapular artery. Our dorsal scapular artery is going to run over and then medial to the scapula, and it's going to supply the levator scapulae with blood, as well as the rhomboid muscles, minor and major, with blood. Sometimes, as we've said before, this dorsal scapular artery is actually coming off of the transverse cervical artery. And so anything after that lateral margin of the first rib, we go from the third part of the subclavian artery to the axillary artery. And that axillary artery is going to run through the axilla or the axillary region, uh, colloquially the armpit. Um, and it's going to be an important artery for uh, the naming of parts of the brachial plexus as we'll discuss. So we've discussed the major vessels coming off of the arch of the aorta and specifically the parts of the subclavian artery and their branches. Thank you very much for your time.